Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Nishit Kumar and with me is Renuka with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister participates in Goa Liberation Day celebrations, inaugurates and lays foundation stone of development projects worth 650 crore rupees. Goa tops in good governance per capita income and several other fronts says the prime minister India and five central asian countries pledge support for peaceful secure and stable afghanistan during the india central asia dialogue government says media speculations doubting feasibility of lic ipo this fiscal year are not correct vice president venkaiah naidu stresses the need to focus on digital and financial literacy among the masses Germany bans travelers from Britain to contain the spread of Omicron variant of COVID-19. In badminton, Kidambi Shrikant bags historic silver in the BWF World Championship at Ouala, Spain, loses to Lokian Yu of Singapore in the finals. And in men's hockey, India thrashed Japan 6-0 in the final round robin match of the Asian Champions Trophy in Dhaka. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, news about the new corona variant is a cause of concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and help others get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe: wear a face mask, maintain two meters distance for social distancing, and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact national helpline numbers 011. Two three nine seven eight zero four six and one zero seven five. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today participated in the Goa Liberation Day celebrations at Shama Prasad Mukherjee Stadium in Taligao. He felicitated freedom fighters and veterans of Operation Vijay at the function. During his address on this occasion, the Prime Minister said, "Goa is top in good governance, per capita income, and several other fronts." He said that Atma Nirbhar Bharat, Swayam Purna Goa, is a grand success in the state. गोवा सरकार के अलग अलग विभागों को एजेंसियों को आत्मनिर्भर भारत और स्वयंपूर्ण गोवा के सफल इम्प्लीमेंटेशन के लिए पुरस्कृत किया गया शानदार काम करने वाली गोवा की पंचायतों म्युनिसिपालिज को भी अवार्ड दिए गए साथ ही आज पुनर्निर्मित किले अगवाड़ा जेल संग्रहालय मेडिकल कॉलेज के सुपर स्पेशलिटी ब्लॉक दक्षिण गोवा जिला अस्पताल और डावर लिम के गैस इंसुलेटेड सब स्टेशन का लोकार्पण भी हुआ है गोवा मेडिकल कॉलेज और मोपा हवाई अड्डे पर विमानन कौशल विकास केंद्र की शुरुआत भी आज से हो गई है मैं आप सभी को भी इन उपलब्धियों के लिए इन विकास परियोजनाओं के लिए अनेक अनेक बधाई देता हूँ The Prime Minister said that during its struggle for liberation people of Goa kept the flame for independence burning for the longest time. Louis de Menezes Brangaja Pristrao Brangaja da Kuna Julio Menezes jaise naam ho Purushottam Kakodkar Lakshmikant Bhambre jaise senani ho ya phir Bala Raya Mapari jaise yuvaon ke balidan hamare kitne hi senaniyon ne aajadi ke baad bhi aandolan kiye pidaye jheli balidan diya lekin is movement ko rukne nahi diya aajadi ke thik pehle Ram Manohar Lohia ji se lekar aajadi ke baad janasang ke kitne hi netaon tak ye mukti aandolan lagatar chala tha The Prime Minister congratulated Goa government for completing 100% coverage of the first dose to all its eligible population. He appreciated Chief Minister Pramod Savant for keeping the pace of development up in the state. The Prime Minister urged the people of the state to set new goals to achieve greater heights. Aap sab milkar jis tarah Goa ko atmanirbhar banane ki aur aage badh rahe hain jis tarah vartaman sarkar khud chalkar door to door ja rahi hai sarkari sewaein जिस तरह ऑनलाइन होकर नागरिकों के हाथ में आ रही हैं, आज जैसे आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव में देश आजादी के 100 साल के लिए नए संकल्प ले रहा है वैसे ही मैं आवाहन करता हूं कि गोवा 
अपनी मुक्ति के 75 साल होने पर कहां पहुंचेगा इसके लिए नए संकल्प लें नए लक्ष्य तय करें Remembering the dynamic leadership qualities of former Chief Minister Manohar Parrikar, Prime Minister Modi said that Goa is on the path of development as envisaged by Parrikar. The Prime Minister mentioned that when invitation was sent to Pope Francis to come to India, he termed it as the greatest gift. Mr. Modi said this reflects Pope's love for India's diversity and vibrant democracy. The Prime Minister laid a wreath on the Martyrs Memorial at Azad Maidan in Panaji. He witnessed a flypast and a sail parade at Miramar Beach. The Prime Minister also inaugurated and laid foundation stone of several development projects worth over 650 crore rupees in the state. Governor P. A. Shri Dharan Pillai, Chief Minister Dr. Pramod Savant, Union Minister of State Shri Padnaik and other ministers were present on the occasion. Goa Liberation Day celebrated on December 19th every year to mark the success of Operation Vijay undertaken by the Indian Armed Forces that liberated Goa from the Portuguese rule in 1961. The third meeting of the India Central Asia Dialogue was held in New Delhi today under the chairmanship of External Affairs Minister Dr S Jay Shankar Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Kazakhstan Kyrgyz Republic Tajikistan Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan took part in the meeting A joint statement released after the India Central Asia Dialogue said the ministers emphasized on the civilizational cultural trade and people to people linkages between India and the Central Asian countries and reaffirmed their commitment to building a comprehensive and enduring India Central Asia partnership The sides also discussed current situation in Afghanistan and its impact on the region. The ministers reiterated strong support for a peaceful, secure and stable Afghanistan while emphasizing the respect for sovereignty, unity and territorial integrity and non-interference in its internal affairs. The ministers reaffirmed the importance of UNSC resolution 2593 which unequivocally demands that Afghan territory not be used for sheltering, training, planning or financing terrorist acts and call for concerted action against all terrorist groups the ministers also agreed to continue close consultations on the situation in afghanistan the ministers supported gradual restoration of the people to people contact tourism and business ties between india and the central asian countries delivering his opening remarks the external affairs minister dr s jayashankar said india and central asian countries share deep rooted historical and civilizational ties with afghanistan He stressed that ways must be found to help the people of Afghanistan. He said this was a good opportunity to review both bilateral and regional relationship and consider the challenges we face. This is a very good opportunity to review both bilateral and regional relationships and consider the challenges that we face more collectively. Our meeting today amidst a rapidly changing global economic and political situation. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in an enormous setback to global health and to global economy. It has changed the way imagined societies, workplaces, supply chains and governance. It also highlights the inadequacy of the existing multilateral structures to meet new and emerging threats. A parliamentary delegation from Vietnam led by Bong Dinh Hieu, the chairman of the National Assembly of Vietnam, called on President Ram Nath Govind at the Rashtrapati Bhavan today. Welcoming the delegation, Mr. Govind said that India and Vietnam enjoy excellent relations at the leadership level in the contemporary time. The president noted that economic engagement between both the countries has maintained a positive direction despite the disruptions due to the COVID-19 pandemic. He was also happy to note that defense partnership between India and Vietnam has been growing steadily. He said that strong defense cooperation between the two countries will contribute to peace, security and prosperity in the region. Union Minister of Home Affairs and Minister of Cooperation Amit Shah today announced that a national level cooperative university will soon be established in the country to further expand the cooperative sector. He was speaking at the graduation ceremony of Vaikuntha Mehta National Cooperative Management Institute in Pune, Maharashtra. Emphasizing the need for expansion of cooperative sector in the villages, Mr. Shah said this sector has made significant contributions in the development of the country since the pre-independence period. He said a co-cooperative policy is being formulated under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to promote the cooperative movement which will be implemented across the country soon. Minister of State for 
Personnel, Public Grievances and Pensions, Dr. Jitendra Singh will inaugurate Good Governance Week in New Delhi tomorrow as part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav celebration. The theme of Good Governance Week is Prashasan Gaon Ki Or, a nationwide campaign for redressal of public grievances and improving service delivery will be held in all districts, states and union territories. In Gujarat, voting was held for elections to 8,690 village panchayats amid tight security arrangements Counting of votes will be held on the 21st of December. Over 8 crore, 82 lakh voters are expected to have cast their votes through ballot papers this time across the state. These elections include general, midterm and by polls. A total of 27,200 candidates are in the fray for the elections of Sarpanch and more than 1 lakh candidates for the votes. Government has allocated 10,180 crore rupees to Rajasthan in the current financial year under the Jalajivan mission. Ministry of Jal Shakti has said that it is a four-fold increase from 2,522 crore rupees allocated in the last financial year. The minister said that the central government is providing all our support to states to make provision of tap water supply to every rural household of the country by 2024. In addition, there is no dearth of funds for implementation of the Jalajivan mission. You are listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister participates in Goa Liberation Day celebrations, inaugurates and lays foundation stone of development projects worth 650 crore rupees. Goa tops in good governance, per capita income and several other fronts, says the Prime Minister. India and five Central Asian countries pledge support for peaceful, secure and stable Afghanistan during India-Central Asia dialogue. Government says media speculations doubting feasibility of LICIPO this fiscal year are not correct. Vice President Venkaiah Naidu stresses the need to focus on digital and financial literacy among masses. Germany bans travellers from Britain to contain spread of Omicron variant of COVID-19. In badminton, Kidambi Shrikant bags historic silver in BWF World Championship at Belva, Spain loses to Lo Kien Yu of Singapore in the final. In men's hockey, India thrashed Japan 6-0 in the final round-robin match of Asian Champions Trophy in Dhaka. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back. You are tuned to the evening news on All India Radio. Vice President Venkaiah Naidu today urged all stakeholders, including the private sector, to come forward and supplement the government's work in the field of adult education and skills training. Stressing the need to make every adult literate, the Vice President also highlighted the need to focus on digital literacy and financial literacy among the masses. Mr. Naidu was addressing the gathering after presenting the prestigious Nehru and Tagore Literacy Awards in New Delhi today. The Vice President said that it was disappointing that despite making great progress in various fields like IT and digitization, India still has the largest number of illiterate persons in the world. Calling for urgent steps to address this challenge, he said the literacy drive should become people's movement. The government has said that some media speculation doubting the feasibility of LIC IPO this fiscal year is not correct. In a tweet, Secretary Department of Investment and Public Asset Management Tuhin Kant Pandey reiterated that plan is on cars for the IPO in the last quarter of this fiscal. Over 137 crore 49 lakh doses of COVID vaccine have been administered so far under nationwide vaccination drive. India's active caseload currently stands at 83,913, which is the lowest in 570 days. Active cases account for less than 1% of total cases. The recovery rate is currently at 98.38%. A total of 7,469 recoveries in the last 24 hours have increased total recoveries to over 3 crore 41 lakh. 7,081 new cases were reported in the last 24 hours. In a measure to contain spread of Omicron variant of COVID-19, Germany has banned travellers from Britain to enter the country. It becomes the latest European nation to, to come up with this directive. German nationals who are in the UK can return, but they must have a negative test report and would have to undergo quarantine for two weeks, irrespective of whether they have been vaccinated or not. 
the stringent measures which have been announced by federal health agency robert koch institute will take effect from this evening germany has also added denmark france norway and lebanon to the high risk list the travel from these countries will also be restricted in britain brexit minister david frost has resigned after expressing dissatisfaction that prime minister boris johnson's tougher covid-19 restrictions on travel following emergence of new covid variant omicron In a letter Mr Frost told Johnson that he was concerned over the current direction of the travel the resignation of Frost a core architect of Johnson's tumultuous Brexit strategy raised questions about the future tone of the European Union divorce and the immediate course of talks on Northern Ireland it also added a sense of turmoil in Johnson's conservative government In our bilingual live phone in program Corona Jagrukta series Dr Surya Kant of King George's Medical University Lucknow will be with us to answer the queries related to coronavirus listeners can ask questions to the expert from 9:30 pm on the telephone number 0112342 and 0112342 you can also post your queries on our twitter handle at air news alerts by hashtag #askair This live program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.gov.in and YouTube channel News on Air Official. To commemorate the occasion as a Jan Utsav All India Radio News brings its listeners a special quiz on India's freedom movement and its glorious history. The quiz is being conducted every Monday and Tuesday in Morning News. The next question of Amrit Mahotsav quiz will be shared with listeners tomorrow. Celebrate 75 years of India's independence by participating in Amrit Mahotsav quiz with AIR News. And now let's listen to our special program Azadi Ka Safar highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi ka safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day Dekhta hu main jise wo chup teri mehfil Today we pay tribute to Ram Prasad Bismil, Ashfaqulla Khan and Roshan Singh who attained martyrdom on 19th of December 1927. Ram Prasad Bismil was among the most notable Indian revolutionaries who fought against British colonialism. The ideals of freedom and revolution got first ingrained in his mind after he read the death sentence passed on the freedom fighter Bhai Parmanand. He used to give vent to his anger in the form of poems. Bismil rose as a prominent freedom fighter with his participation in Manipuri conspiracy. In 1918, Ashfaqullah was a student in school. Inspired by the Manipuri conspiracy, young Ashfaqullah asked his friend to introduce him to Ram Prasad Bismil. and thus in 1920 began the legendary friendship of bismil and ashfaqullah which ended only with their death no. Over the next 7 years Ashfaq and Bismil engaged in revolutionary activities under the banner of the Hindustan Republican Association. They were arrested after the Kakori robbery and the trial for the case went on for over a year and a half. It ended in April 1927 with Ram Prasad Bismil, Ashfaqullah Khan and Rajendra Lahiri sentenced to death and the others given life sentences while in lucknow central jail bismil wrote his autobiography and also the cult song mera rang de basanti chola o mera rang de basanti chola oye rang de basanti chola mai rang de basanti chola 
With the words, Jai Hind, on his lips, the 30-year-old Bismil was hanged in the Gorakhpur jail on December 19, 1927 and cremated on the banks of Rapti River. Ashfaqullah Khan was put to death by hanging on 19th of December 1927 at Fezabat jail. <laughs> Roshan Singh was an Indian revolutionary born on the 22nd of January 1892 in Shah Jahapur district in Uttar Pradesh. Although he had not taken part in the Kakori conspiracy of August 1925, he was arrested and tried for a murder carried out during the Bamroli Dacoity in December 1924. He was sentenced to death along with Ram Prasad Bismil, Ashfaqullah Khan and Rajendra Lahiri. He was executed at Naini Jail in Prayagraj on the 19th of December 1927. We pay tribute to the brave sons of the soil. December 19 is also the Goa Liberation Day. On August 15, 1947, when India gained its independence, Goa was still under the Portuguese rule. Following unsuccessful negotiations with the Portuguese, the former Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, decided that military intervention was the only option. The 36-hour military operation conducted from December 18, 1961, was codenamed Operation Vijay. On December 19, 1961, Indian troops reclaimed the Goan territory and the Portuguese Governor-General Manuel Antonio Vassalo de Silva signed the Certificate of Surrender, thus bringing Portuguese rule in the region to an end. This made India completely free from foreign rule. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Azadi Ke Andolan Ke Khazani Me Aise Dheron Shabd Jinhone Badal Diye Itihaz तारीख बदलने वाले लफ्जों पर आकाशवाणी समाचार ला रहा है विशेष कार्यक्रम धरोहर हर सोमवार बेस्ट विशेष टू ऑल कंज्यूमर्स फॉर आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव Hallmark ensures purity of gold. Always purchase Hallmark Gold Jewelry. For any consumer-related complaints, please contact National Consumer Helpline's toll-free number 14404. Issued in public interest by the Department of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. Jago Grahak Jago. मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ जी के नेतृत्व में उत्तर प्रदेश विकास की नई रफ्तार पकड़ चुका है एक्सप्रेसवेज मेट्रो सेवाएं और एयरपोर्ट्स शुरू होने से इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के विकास के नए आयाम गढ़े जा रहे हैं चार नए एक्सप्रेसवे पांच शहरों में मेट्रो सेवाएं शुरू और नए एयरपोर्ट्स शुरू हो चुके हैं सड़क के साथ ही अब एयर कनेक्टिविटी में भी प्रदेश का दायरा काफी बढ़ चुका है उत्तर प्रदेश देश में इकलौता राज्य है जहाँ पाँच इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट संचालित है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के ये कार्य आर्थिक और औद्योगिक विकास को पंख लगाने का काम करेंगे मुख्यमंत्री योगी आदित्यनाथ के संकल्प से उत्तर प्रदेश का नव निर्माण हो रहा है और ये नए भारत के निर्माण में योगदान दे रहा है सोच ईमानदार काम दमदार उत्तर प्रदेश सरकार द्वारा जनहित में प्रसारित In Kashmir Valley, Inspector General of Police Vijay Kumar today said that three Pakistani terrorists have been gunned down in different encounters in the past 33 days within the Srinagar city. He said that the three terrorists, including the one who was killed in a brief encounter with security forces in Harwan area of Srinagar this morning, were involved in attacks on security forces and civilians. The terrorist who was killed today has been identified as Saifullah alias Abu Khalid. In another incident, a policeman was shot at and injured by terrorists in Banduzu area of South Kashmir's Pulwama district. 
In Philippines, at least 108 people have been reportedly killed as Super Typhoon Rai, with wind speed of about 195 km per hour, hit the country's southeastern islands. Rescue and relief efforts are on in the typhoon hit areas. Sources from the rescue team said that the exact loss of life and property cannot be ascertained as communication to a number of areas has been cut off due to the flooding and landslide caused by the typhoon. The International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies has launched an emergency appeal seeking 20 million Swiss francs to fund long-term relief efforts. Cold wave has gripped entire North India. As per the India Meteorological Department, cold wave to severe cold wave conditions have been observed in some places over East Rajasthan in isolated pockets over West Rajasthan and West Madhya Pradesh and Haryana. Cold wave conditions have also been observed in some places over Uttar Pradesh, Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Gilgit, Baltistan and Muzaffarabad, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh and East Madhya Pradesh. Churu has reported the lowest minimum temperature of minus 2.6 degrees Celsius followed by Seeker with minus 2.5 degrees and Amritsar with minus 0.5 degrees. Director General of the India Meteorological Department, Dr. Mrutanjay Mohapatra, told AIR that severe cold wave and cold wave conditions are likely to continue over the northwest India till Tuesday and a bit thereafter. During the past three days, cold wave to severe cold wave conditions are prevailing in some parts of northwest India, including Haryana, Chandigarh, Punjab, North Rajasthan, North Madhya Pradesh, West UP, some parts of Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand. Especially over the hilly areas, temperatures are sub zero, and over the plains, temperatures are below normal by about uh, 4 to 6 degrees Celsius. In addition to this, below normal night temperatures, day temperatures are also below normal by 4 to 6 degrees Celsius over some parts of the plains of northwest India. As a result, cold day conditions are also prevailing in some parts. Of northwest India. In addition to cold wave and cold day conditions, the dry northwesterly winds are prevailing over the plain, which is aggravating the adverse impact of cold day and cold wave conditions. And this condition will continue till 21st, and thereafter, temperature is likely to increase. In badminton, Kidambi Shrikant backed a historic silver medal in the BWF World Championships at Velva in Spain. Shrikant had to settle for the silver after losing to Lo Kiam Yu of Singapore, 15-21, 20-22, in the men's single final this evening. The former world number one Shrikant is the first Indian to finish runners-up. He etched his name in the history books after becoming the first Indian to reach the men's singles final of a world championship. In a historic all-Indian semi-final last night, Shrikant defeated compatriot Lakshya Sen, 17-21, 21-14, 21-17 in a thrilling contest that lasted an hour and nine minutes. Lakshya finished with the bronze medal. This is also the first time that India got two medals in the men's singles in the same edition of the Badminton World Championships. In Asian Champions Trophy, Men's Hockey Tournament defending champion India thrashed Japan 6-0 in the final round-robin match in Dhaka this evening. Penalty corner specialist Harman Preet Singh scored a brace while Dilpreet Singh, Jaman Preet Singh, Sumit and Shamshir Singh added a goal each. India, the Tokyo Olympics broad medalists, had already booked their semi-finals berth in the tournament. And now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi will have cold wave conditions. The temperature will vary between 4 and 19 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have clear sky. Minimum temperature will be 21 degrees, while the maximum is expected to be around 30 degrees. Chennai is expected to have partly cloudy sky. Temperature will vary between 22 and 29 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have clear sky. City will observe a minimum of 12 and a maximum of around 23 degrees. Vishakhapatnam will have generally cloudy sky with haze. City will observe a minimum temperature of 20 and a maximum of 29 degrees. Hyderabad will have fog mist in the morning and mainly clear sky later. Tiruvananthapuram will have partly cloudy sky. Guwahati and Agartala will have fog or mist in early morning. Imphal will have partly cloudy sky. City will observe a minimum temperature of 7 degrees Celsius and a maximum of around 22 degrees. Shillong and Aizol will have partly cloudy sky with haze. Kohima, Itanagar and Gangtok will have clear sky. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister participates in Goa Liberation Day celebrations, inaugurates and lays foundation stone of development projects worth 650 crore rupees. Goa tops in good governance for capita income and several other fronts, says the Prime Minister. India and five Central Asian countries pledge support for peaceful, secure and stable Afghanistan during India-Central Asia dialogue. Government says media speculations doubting feasibility of LIC IPO this financial year are not correct. Vice President Venkaiah Naidu stresses the need to focus on digital and financial literacy among masses. 
Germany bans travelers from Britain to contain the spread of Omicron variant of COVID-19. In badminton, Kidambi Shrikant bags historic silver in the BWF World Championships at Huala, Spain, loses to Lo Kin Yu of Singapore in the final. And in men's hockey, India thrashed Japan 6-0 in the final round-robin match of the Asian Champions Trophy in Dhaka. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.